I am going to say that we are heading for really dark times and it is definitely going to take, we're not too far at the moment where we are at a point where people have proven that they will be capable of violence against people where they think promote to them hate speech against their values. If you oppose their values, they will consider you, consider you hate speech and that is the reason why they are taking strong measures, especially what is going on. Now, the first thing that we realize with this uh, BLM movement and the riots that are occurring, we know that with all these people at Chaz and getting all mad, and then there's violence on the streets, and then uh, p burnings, and then vehicle accidents, and et cetera, and et cetera, that we're like wondering, you know, with all this, it's going to be a matter of time where there's going to be a spike. So then if they're going to complain about spikes, then we're like wondering, well, hey, watch out. I mean, when they talk about it, there's going to be a spike, you'll wonder why. It's because all these riots are occurring. And then, lo and behold, we get a spike coming out, don't we? But uh, when we get these spikes coming out, because why? Because you get literally thousands of people crammed against each other. So then with all these people crying out uh, their rights and doing riots and then knocking down homes, etc. I mean, it's really at a bad place. Now, look, uh, I am against, uh, I am not condoning about what happened to Floyd. And yes, uh, we are against... Uh, the racism and discrimination where people are viewing it as hatred of other races and then demeaning them. And then the Bible actually condemns about kidnapping people at the book of Exodus, if I recall, and then using them as property. We're totally against that. We do not believe that at all. But the thing is, as we see the spike, no surprise, this is by Fidel Alassan by Axios. And then he gives a scary prediction, Fauci. What does he say? He says that the title reads, Fauci warns U.S. could see how many? 100,000 new coronavirus cases per day. Per day. So this is what oh, one of the elites over here, Fauci, says could happen. And you wonder why with all this. So this should definitely be blamed. No, don't blame them because there's a new study that came out from CNN titled Black Lives Matter protests have not led to a spike in coronavirus cases, research says. Now, this gets even funnier, okay? Listen to, pay attention. They use scientific language to fool you, but actually it's asinine. It's very asinine. Pay attention now. Our findings suggest that any direct decrease in social distancing among the subset of the population participating in the protests. Okay, what does that mean? Be uh, basically, the translation is all these guys are breaking social distancing. Okay, that's the plain language of that. So then, this one is more than offset by increasing social distance, distancing behavior among others who may choose to shelter at home and circumvent public places while the protests are underway. What are you talking about over here? So in other words, you're justifying this, okay? Like this, is, this distancing where it's not really applied to this population, it's going to be offset because there's a greater number out there who are practicing social distancing. Then open our churches then! How asinine is that, man? Stinking wicked people, man. How asinine is that? Then, then it reads over here, it's still possible that protests may have caused an increase in the spread of the virus among those who attended protests. Make up your mind, fool. Bunch of wicked evil people, man. And then uh, what they said, there's an increase. Why? Because two people got infected in the churches. Shut up, you yeah. wicked, demon-possessed people, man. Demon-possessed, wicked people. Make you stinking angry at this wicked world. But uh, let's just see how it gets even more and more sensitive over here. Now, I'm not kidding you over here. So the, the sensitivity with uh, culture, okay, it's just getting plainly ridiculous. We know about the statues that are being knocked down, right? 
So then, do we condone these people where they, were, uh, they wanted slavery and continue slavery? We never said that over there. But I'll tell you what, is that when America became a great nation, I'm sorry, but a lot of you are going to have a hard time believing this, but as well as all other countries, black, white, Asian, etc., a lot of them practiced slavery. Okay, nearly everyone that time. What I find very interesting, though, you like to pick and choose, don't you? Shouldn't you attack every culture that does that? Should we knock down every statue then that does that? Well, yeah, apparently they do. They knock down every statue, including people who oppose slavery. This is a tweet, a, a, a tweet by Ian Miles Cheong, and he posts this picture in the tweet, rioters in Philly deface a statue of Matthias Baldwin, an early abolitionist who fought against slavery 30 years before it ended. This is a tweet by Elijah Schaefer. BLM protesters vandalized a statue of John Greenleaf in Whittier, California, a prominent Quaker abolitionist known for his anti-slavery writings. Here's another one tweet by James Hartfield. BLM protesters vandalized the Shaw Memorial that commemorates the all-black battalion that fought for abolition in the American Civil War. Now, this is stupid, man. This is plainly wicked over here. So then what they're doing over here is that, look, this is not all about, you know, cultural sensitivity. No, you're just knocking down everything out there. Because uh, is it more accurate to probably see it as that you're demonizing a particular race and you want to pick on that, and so because it represents every white man out there that you want to knock it down, maybe that's why, without really thinking or using your heads, maybe that's what's going on. Shouldn't we do this, if we're going to be fair, shouldn't we do this with all other cultures that had some participation in slavery in some way? I mean, use your heads on that one, people. It's just ridiculous. Man, it's just infuriating uh, about the hypocrisy of people nowadays. Now, uh, you want to see the rise of cultural sensitivity? Uh, this gets even worse over here. Let's just see how uh, sensitive that it gets over here. Rolling Stone magazine. So this is from Rolling Stone magazine. The title, uh, which is by E.J. Dixon. <laughs> okay, some of you might laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Because they want to promote uh, the black power movement, and because anything that attributes some connection toward uh, white slavery, etc., or any form of racism, or does not promote diversity, this is how sensitive you get. The title of the article is, Sorry, Olivia Benson is Cancelled Too. Why? The subt subtitle says, The Law and Order SVU protagonist gets lionized as a TV good cop that does real world damage. Law and Order SVU, they have to... <laughs> They have, to, they have to cancel her. Why? Because it's just gotten too ridiculous over here. Now, you, if you think, uh, let, let me show you even more over here. Title from Axios by Sarah Fisher. Fil the title of the article, Ju June 13, 2020, Films Vying for Oscars Must Meet Diversity Qualifications, Academy says. All right, now let me read more over here. From Fox Business. But, uh, this, the title of the article, published June 21st, is Eskimo Pie to Rename Its Derogatory Brand Name. You want more? ABC News by Alexandra Olson, June 18, 2020. Aunt Jemima Brand, retired by Quaker due to racial stereotype. Let me give you one, another one. Title of the article from the New York Times by Christine Hauser. And uh, this was uh, updated April 20th, 2020. Title of the article, Land O'Lakes, that's a butter, okay? Land O'Lakes removes Native American women from its product. All right, you want more? Washington Post, this is from, this gets so bad that the title of this article from the Washington Post is May 26th, and this was three years ago. Should white chefs sell burritos? A Portland food carts, carts revealing controversy. This is by Tim Carmen, I think, who wrote the article. You want more? This is by Fox 2 Detroit. 
Title of the article by Taryn Asher, who wrote it, and this was three years ago, Detroit firefighter fired for bringing watermelon to station. Here's another one by Woman's Health Magazine, of all things. Corin Miller, June 25th, 2020. The Dixie, title of the article, The Dixie Chicks Changed Their Name Because the Word Dixie is Problematic. This is uh, from, it says over here, this is by uh, Paul who told Mark J. Spears of ESPN's The Undeleted, and they have a subtitle here, NBA may let players wear statements on jerseys instead of names. Okay, you want more? You want more? This is, you don't think this is ridiculous? So a guy named Mark Dice decided to do this. So Mark Dice... He went shopping in Albertsons, and then he found a, uh, he found a sauce, and I think it's called, uh, it's like a smoky barbecue sauce, and it had a black man as a picture over there, and the, the product name is Stubbs. And then he found another aisle where it kind of looked like ropes that looked like dog leash, like it's hanging somebody. And then he found another uh, uh, item in the food aisle, the fruit section, with a slice of watermelon for 99 cents. And then he said to Albertsons, just found these racist products on the shelf at Albertsons. And then you know what Albertsons did? Albertsons, they actually said this. <laughs> they, of all things, when he did that, they actually sent him an apology, saying, we are so sorry, can you please let us know so we can handle this effectively immediately? And then he says, it's okay, I already called the FBI and it's already taken care of. And Albertsons realized that he was just joking. They ignored him after that. But it, this is worse. This is by Yahoo Entertainment, uh, June 24th, 2020. Lindsay Parker is the article, uh, is the author. Title of the article, Why It Might Be Time to Finally Replace the Star-Spangled Banner with a New National Anthem. And some of them suggested John Lennon's Imagine. All right, then. Now, you don't think that this is really upsetting over here? This is, this is plain asinine, man. This is communist takeover over here. Look at this, man. Like you, and by the way, I find this hypocritical because I study in liberal universities where they're showing all these products that feature white men. And they're like asking, why don't they put different diversities over there? so that people don't think it's a white man's product whenever they look at a doll or other objects. There should be different cultures in there. Well, you hypocrite, you just canceled them. Yeah. You just canceled, oh my goodness, then what, what, what do you wanna do, man? What do you wanna do? What they want is that they just want you to fall on your knees and say you're sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's just, this is from Fox News. Title of the article is Black Lives Matter Leader States if U.S. doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn this, down this system. This is by Victor Garcia from Fox News. All right, so what do they say about this? This is interesting what he says. You have said that violence is sometimes necessary in these situations, host Martha McCallum told Newsom. What exactly is it that you hope to achieve through violence? And then Newsom, he responded this way. Wow, it's interesting that you would pose a question like that. Because this country is built upon violence. What was the American Revolution? What's our diplomacy across the globe? We go in and we blow up countries and we replace their leaders with leaders who we like. He's not denying this, man. He's not denying the violence. It's scary. McCallum clarified that her question was based off comments that she had heard Newsom utter in various interviews. I said, Newsom told the host, if this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it, all right? And I could be speaking figuratively. I could be speaking literally. It's a matter of interpretation. What in the world? Then you're acknowledging that. You're condoning it? But then he later said on that, uh, no, I'm not all for violence and all that. Then why did you say that? You know why? Because you're angry. And when people are angry, they might, see, they might cool themselves down and say, we're not for violence. And they might mean that. But when they're in anger mode, dude, they mean violence over here. And that's proof. This interview is proof where he denied the violence, but then he didn't deny it when he said it. That's really sad. This is, uh, this is really powerful, actually, because they emphasize about black power 
This is what they caught this Black Lives, Ladder, uh, Black Lives Matter movement leader on. This is what Martin Luther King Jr. said. Let us be dissatisfied until that day when nobody will shout white power, when nobody will shout black power, but everybody will talk about God's power and human power. When, when the interviewer used that on the leader, you know what he said? Newsom responded, I love the Lord and my Lord and Savior. Oh, don't shame our testimony, please. He says, Jesus Christ is the most famous black radical revolutionary in history. It's just wicked. Here's another BLM leader. Now, he used to be very popular a couple of years ago. He may be today, but he's very controversial because uh, they're judging uh, his true ethnicity, actually. His name is Sean King, and he says this in his Twitter. So he says this in his Twitter. June 22nd, 2020, he tweeted this. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy. He also says this. All murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form white supremacy. So you know what he's doing? Now it's reaching where it's, see, these people are just violent. But then now they're aiming that toward, they're finding hate people to aim the target on, right? Yeah. But now it's going to aim toward where now? See, churches. Yeah, that's right. It's aiming for the believers now. It's going to come. That's what they're going to be doing. Get rid of the stained glass windows that depict pictures of Jesus. And then also the same thing uh, with any depiction of Jesus. Tear down these images, uh, these pictures, and these windows of Jesus. Well, hey, if you go to all other countries around the world, they depict Jesus in their culture, in their, uh, in their culture, in their region. Now, me, I don't condone that because I believe in doing a true depiction, which is Jesus Christ is a Jew. All right, I'm sorry. A lot of you anti-Semites don't like that, but that's true. That's how we do it. But nevertheless, for crying out loud, you can't be all sensitive that we got to tear it down based on what? It doesn't fit your kind of profile that you prefer. Because all other countries do that. That's normal in their region. What kind of, uh, in their culture, how they want to depict their religion. I mean, you see that in Ethiopian churches, actually, about uh, how they depict Jesus as black, etc. Shouldn't we t tear those things down too then? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But you see where this violence is heading. And if you, don't, if you doubt the violence of where it's heading, let me tell you something about the Christopher Columbus statue. This is by CBS Boston. It shows a Christopher Columbus statue in Boston beheaded overnight. You see where this violence is going? They're, so, uh, they're doing it on objects for now and churches for now, but wait, just give it enough time. Then they can go for beheading. Revelation 11, what happens? There are people who are out on the streets who revel in rioting, who revel in the violence, and they lay out the two heads of the witnesses on the streets. Revelation 11. You doubt that, huh? You see, see these things? It's a stepping stones to, what, to the real thing that's going to happen. Look at verse 7. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bombless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Look at this. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. And look at verse 9. Multiculture. See? They of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall she their dead bodies on the streets and they don't suffer to be put in graves. See that? People aren't capable of doing that. We're getting there. We're getting there. You doubt that, huh? They're beheaded. Because why? Revelation 20, right? Revelation 20, I'll read it briefly. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. That's how they're killed by the beast, is beheaded. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast. That's where we're heading, folks, with this uh, violence that's rising, with this uh, riots that are occurring. And then guess who's funding that? We all know who's funding that. It's George Soros, 
But then you get these people that saying, oh, no, it's a conspiracy. You're automatically connecting dots. Well, look at this, okay? Uh, let me just <laughs> tell you how much Soros donated. And this is from Fox Business, okay? And it's a YouTube video from Fox Business. The title, you won't believe it, all right? How much do you know is actually charity to help out people? Or you know you have a political agenda? And if you look at all the other conservatives, they get millions or millions of dollars, right? And then they say, look at these conservative organizations getting donated millions of dollars. Well, look at this. Soros, do you know how much he donated to Open Society Foundation? Which, uh, if you trace down the line of connections, that's how the BLM supporters get their money, their funding. That's why they can keep doing their protests. You know uh, how much he gave? Mil hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe 500 million, right? Let's accuse him of 500 million. No. Is it larger? Yeah, larger. One billion? Larger. Am I hearing this right? Yeah, okay. Five billion, Pastor. Larger. Ten billion. Larger. Title of the article, George Soros transfers $18 billion to Open Society Foundation. Look at that. And that's a good point over there. Look at that. 666, $18 billion over there. No agenda, obviously. No agenda? Really? When you're doing this much? That's a huge part from his income, you gotta understand. There's something going on where the, I'm dedicated to do this. Something's, something's rotten, man. Something's rotten going on. Yeah. Something's rotten going on. Very, very strange devices in our world. What's Satan setting up? He's setting up his new world order system. That's what's going on. If you speak out, um, there's a, they, they filter it. They shut you down. The title of the article is from Paul Bond, June, 6, uh, June 2, 2nd, 2020. It's from Newsweek. And there was a big documentary that really went big. But Walmart refused to sell the DVD. So they're filtering, they're shutting, silencing them, but these people can speak out. That's what's going on. At the tribulation, what's going to happen? The gospel, the Antichrist wants to silence it or any form of truth that's against his system. He'll silence it, but he'll make sure that his system is spoken out. The title of the article is Stars of Documentary About Free Speech Blast Walmart for Refusing to Sell DVD. They're shutting them down. They're shutting them down. As we get into more good news over here, uh, the title of this YouTube video, which is, uh, is by Washington Post, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in conversation with Robert Costa. When you look at that uh, live stream that they had, she actually mentioned that it's not just the Confederate leaders, not just Confederate leaders, but American founding fathers they're holding for review, wondering if they should tear, uh, replace those and tear them down too. Now, if you want to do this, this is something that they're not looking at, okay? You, okay, if you want to be fair in taking down slavery, then I find it hypocritical that you're doing it in America of all places where a lot of people emphasize about freedom, but you're not fo putting that much attention, money, Soros, and focus on real modern-day slavery going on, and one of the biggest countries is Africa. This is by Global Slavery Index. The title is Global Findings. And this is very, very troubling what they said. An estimated 40.3 million men, women, and children were victims of modern slavery on any given day in 2016. Of these, 24.9 million people were in forced labor and 15.4 million people were living in a forced marriage. Women and girls are vastly overrepresented, making up 71% of vic victims. Modern slavery is most prevalent in Africa, followed by the Asia and the Pacific region. They mention over here, uh, the current global estimates do not cover all, modern, all forms of modern slavery, which fail to include, for example, organ trafficking, child soldiers, or child marriage that could also constitute forced marriage are not able to be adequately measured at this time. Further, at a broad regional level, there is high confidence in the estimates in all, but one of the five regions, estimates of modern slavery in the Arab states are affected by substantial gaps in the available data. Given this is a region that hosts 17.6 million migrant workers. 
representing, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't that tragic and sad? Shouldn't we invest this one on that one? Let's solve slavery, man. No, you're trying to pick on something that's all the way from a long time ago. Okay, do I justify uh, any form of microaggression, racism, di discrimination? For this video, I just want to say plainly this. I'm not going to condone it, obviously. But if we're going to go by that logic, what are you paying more attention to, huh? That's right. It shows you're, you're biased. You want to pick on somebody. It's not being very honest over here. That's why uh, it riles me up concerning this. The violence is increasing so much and the, the, the foolishness of not just, okay, you got one thing where you're heading toward here. Okay, it starts out like this. Then it goes over here where you're banning all sorts of products, ridiculousness. And then you're going over here where you're like putting your violence on people, objects for now. And then you're heading toward churches and then the silly little Christians, because of this pressure, they go over here and then they apologize to them. This is the title of this. This is from Passion City Church. And I don't, I'm not surprised they received a huge number of dislikes. June 15, 2020. But they interviewed. The title of this YouTube video is The Beloved Community. Dan, Kathy, Lecrae, Louis, Jiglio. I think that's how I pronounced his last name right. Forgive me if I did it wrong. But the thing is this, is that in that, uh, if you look at that interview, the guy who is one of the responsible leaders of Chick-fil-A, right? The one who took a mighty stand for Jesus against homosexuality, etc. This guy mentioned in the video about apologizing for the racial injustice. And then he mentioned about that, he, that we should go down on our knees to them and shine their shoes. And then he, not only that, he gave approximately over a hundred of those shine shoe brushes to his Chick-fil-A employees too. Why? Because he was trying to give a Christian example of humility and apologizing for racial discrimination and justice. For crying out loud, what are you doing here, man? Uh, meanwhile, what do you think Satan's about to do with Israel? The attention's diverted now. So Satan wants to attack the church because church gatherings are forbidden, right? But these gatherings are okay, right? Now look at Hebrews 10.25. Hebrews is a timeline of the tribulation, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more. We have to assemble as much as we can. We got to encourage ourselves. Why? As ye see the day approaching. So Paul is mentioning over here that because that day is approaching more and more and more, where the rapture will happen, the tribulation occur, we better assemble as much as we can. You know what, what Paul, what does it sound like over here? It's as if Paul is saying that our gathering is not going to last forever. So you better gather while you can, because there's a time it's going to be over. Aren't we already at that time? We're getting there. Yes, sir. So now they're going to forbid their gatherings. And then they're going to do the same thing with Israel. So God has two people he will use. And the two people that he's using, one is today the church at the church age. The second people is during the tribulation, the Jews. And that day is coming really soon about the nation of Israel. Uh, about This is from, they're getting opposition from all sides over here actually. The Times of Israel uh, reads this. Two rockets fired at Israel from Gaza. IDF hits Hamas targets in response. That's June 26, 2020 by Toy Staff. Why? Because of the annexation. That's why. That's coming. You all didn't know about that, right? Our attention's diverted into something else. Rocket warning sirens blare in Israeli communities around the Strip a day after Hamas warned Israeli annexation in West Bank would be a declaration of war. Man, we're getting close, brethren. This is from the Times of Israel again. The title of the article is Hamas, Israeli annexation would be a declaration of war. This is what they said. This is scary. This is what the terrorists said, June 25th, 2020. Quote, we will make the enemy bite his fingers in remorse for this sinful decision. Official in terror groups, military wing says in speech marking anniversary, in, in a speech that marked the anniversary of Shalit kidnapping. 
And then America obviously would side with that, right? This is from the Jerusalem Post. Title of the article is Bernie Sanders Joins AOC's Anti-Annexation Letter by Omri Nam Namias, July 1st, 2020. This is what they said. This is what these liberals did, all right? Bernie Sanders, Cortez, and these people, this is what they all did when they teamed up together for this. We will include human rights conditions and the withholding of funds for the offshore procurement of Israeli weapons equal to or exceeding the amount the Israeli government spends annually to fund settlements, as well as the policies and practices that sustain and enable them, the lawmakers added. That's a, man, that almost sounds like a threat for their national security. I mean, if you go to Israel, it's not a safe place, man. But then they're saying, oh no, we're gonna take away uh, funding you for uh, military defense and protection if you, uh, if you do your annexation. What did God said? That's my land. That's what he says. That's my land. And what did he did for the Arabs? He already gave them their land. God gave them different territories where they can spread their kingdoms. And God said, I would bless Isaac, the Jews, and Ishmael, the Arabs. Stay in the place where God called you to be. If there's a person that wants my ministry and I want another pastor's ministry, that violates what God called us to do. See, the Lord don't like that. All right. Well, welcome to our crazy world, right? So look at the book of Psalms 86. This passage definitely applies to what's really occurring today. And then we'll definitely see this in the tribulation. So Psalms 86 obviously is not an application to us, although you can definitely apply that devotionally which then would, could almost make it doctrinal to, de to today. But uh, this is more so for a timeline of the tribulation. These riots are necessary. This assembling, this gathering is necessary where they're all hankering, they're all teaming up against us. It's necessary. Go to Psalms chapter 86. Notice what the word of God says after verse 14. O God, the proud are risen against me. And the what? Assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. That's what's going to happen. Now, I would like to, you know what's the greatest deception, I think, is this, is that um, the people that the Lord mightily used, I believe, and they're the easiest to witness to in the gospel, are actually black people. Amen. White people, I mean, they're the ones that are really resistant. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they're very resistant. But black people, they'll just listen, they'll get saved. So maybe Satan's agenda is that because he knows these people have a passion for the Lord Jesus Christ and they're involved in church, he can get them diverted. He can get these churches, black churches, diverted from their focus on the Savior and then focus right here. What are pastors paying more of their attention on? 